Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I tested and reviewed the Bowers & Wilkins PI5 not long ago, but I got my hands on a pair of PI7s as well, which is the more expensive and more feature-packed brother of the PI5. This time I will not only test the PI7 thoroughly, but I will also compare the two models, so if you haven't seen my PI5 review yet, then I suggest you go watch it first, as there are a lot of similarities between the two buds, and in this video I'm going to focus mostly on the differences and on the extra features you get with the PI7. So let's get right into it. I know I said I was going to talk about the differences, but there is not much to report when it comes to the design of the buds. Apart from some color differences, the PI7 look and feel exactly the same as the PI5. Both buds are available in charcoal and white, their build quality is great, such are their comfort and fit. The PI7 are a tad heavier as they weigh 7.7 grams, while the PI5 are only 7.2 grams each. We also get the same IP54 rating on both and it means that either bot can be a good choice for workouts. When I was running with the PI7 however, I noticed that I had to adjust the buds in my ears a tad more often, as I felt like they moved a bit around and got loose after a while. Never had the same issue with the PI5. Maybe the little difference in weight and its distribution could affect the fit, but it's still plenty secure for most workouts, and what might be even more important is that it has no effect on the comfort itself. Both the PI5 and the PI7 are very comfortable earbuds to wear for even hours on end. The case looks the same as well at first, with one obvious difference. Well, two actually. First, the lid got a golden colored coating, and second, there is a button on the front for the audio retransmission feature, but more about that in a minute. Unfortunately, the materials and the build quality have the same cheap feeling I had about the PI5. So for 400 euros or dollars, you will get a fully plastic case with a lid that's flopping around when fully open. I don't know. Yes, it's lightweight, yes, it's pocketable, and yes, it is compatible with the Qi wireless charging standard, but it does not feel premium at all. And these are the most expensive earbuds I have ever had in my hands. For $100 less, you can get a stainless steel case with the Master & Dynamic MW08, for example, so cost should not be an issue here. But I know there are loads of people who will be happy with the case anyway, so let's just move on. In my battery life test where I use Tidal for streaming on an iPad with volume set to around 50%, the buds last about 3 hours and 45 minutes with ANC Auto turned on, and around 4 and a half hours with ANC turned off. And that is more or less the same as it was on the PI5. Total use time is about 20 hours with the case. 50 minutes of quick charging will give you 2 hours of music playback. Of course there can be differences between your experience and mine, and playtime largely depends on how and where you use your earbuds, but again, there is not much that differentiates the two buds in terms of battery life. And the same can be said about their design, comfort and fit too. But where you can see a massive difference is connection. First, the PI7 will not only give you SBC, AAC and regular Aptex support, but you will also get the more flexible Aptex adaptive codec along with Aptex low latency, Aptex HD and true 24-bit high-res sound. The Aptex adaptive codec can dynamically adjust the bitrate and the latency of your audio stream, depending on what's required. In busy environments, it can lower the bitrate to improve connection stability, and it can lower latency to avoid sync issues with games and movies, and it does all that automatically without you ever noticing anything. And I have to say that it works perfectly well. I had no issues with music listening, watching movies and playing games either. And in general, the connection proved to be more consistent and stable across all my devices and all applications. No dropouts and no weird issues I had with the PI5. Except for the app, which seemed to have lost connection with the bots a couple of times, but the bots themselves kept working with the phone, so I reckon it's the app itself which is the problem, and not the earbuds, and that can be easily fixed down the road. And second, there is the audio retransmission feature, which means that you can plug the case in any source device using either a USB-C to USB-C cable, or a 3.5mm jack to USB-C cable, and the case will act as a wireless transmitter between your source device and the earbuds. With computers, I would suggest using the USB to USB cable, so you can bypass the low quality analog output found on most laptops, and use the case as a DAC and a wireless transmitter while keeping it charged at at the same time. It's quite a brilliant feature and when you listen to true 24-bit high-res songs or watch movies on your laptop, it makes the PI7 truly shine. 
However, I did not test it with games on my long in the tooth MacBook Pro, but I'm pretty sure it would work just as fine as any wireless headsets. And if it wasn't enough, you can use the case to transmit audio to any other compatible Bowers and Wilkins wireless headphones, or even the PI5s for that matter. I wish it could transmit signals to any third party wireless buds, but that would be too good to be true. On to more common features, we get single bud mode on both the 5 and the 7, so not much difference there. The phone call quality of the PI7 is also very similar to what I experienced with the PI5. My voice is a bit thin and it could be louder too, but the voice transmission quality is okay. Now let's put all the six microphones to work by turning on some noise on the speakers behind me. You can hear the noise through the Rode NTG5 microphone and when I switch back to the mics on the PI7, the noise cancelling kicks in, but my voice can get lost in the background noise a little, so there is not much improvement over the 4 mic setup on the PI5, if any. In a street noise scenario, such as the one you hear now through the Rode NTG5, I feel like the mics on the PI7 do a better job and the clarity of my voice is a tiny bit better than it is on the PI5, but we are talking about nuances here. So this was the mic quality test of the PI7. Next up are the controls. The touch controls and their functionality are exactly the same as on the PI5. You can control play, pause, tracks, phone calls, your voice assistant and ambient modes. No volume controls, no customization and you can only toggle between A and C on and off but you cannot enable the pass-through mode from the buds, you will have to use the app for that. It's a bummer but I guess I should just get over it at this stage. The app offers the same features including software updates, the in-ear sensor switch for the autoplay pose, different soundscapes for relaxing and the connection history. No EQ and no further custom options either. The only difference you can find in the app is within the ANC settings where you get an auto button which activates the adaptive noise cancelling on the PI7 so the bots can increase or decrease the level of noise reduction automatically depending on the amount of ambient noise. The PI5 only have an ANC on and off switch in the app. And the pass-through mode has a slider instead of the simple less and more options which you get with the PI5. So you can fine-tune the level of pass-through more easily with the PI7 and that can prove to be useful in different scenarios. I tested the buds on my mini DSP headphone rig and as you can see the results show an almost identical performance with only maybe a decibel of difference between the two buds in my airplane cabin noise test. Sound pressure level started off at around 85 decibels before I turned on the ANC and both buds went down to around 66-68 decibels which means 17 to 19 decibels of attenuation. The two graphs are very close and the differences are basically indistinguishable in real life too. Interestingly enough the auto mode resulted in slightly higher noise levels than when I simply left the ANC on and disabled the adaptive auto mode in the software. The same happened in my ambient chatter test, both buds delivered the same poor performance and the auto mode on the PI7 didn't seem to be able to cope with the situation any better either. Walking around on the street and listening to music with ANC on provided a very smooth experience, but I found not much difference between the two buds. I felt like wind noise was less of an issue on the PI7 and maybe the pass-through mode is a bit more intense too in its maximum setting, but that's it really. To have a proper conversation you will still need to turn down your music regardless of which buds you use. So for the active noise cancellation alone, I wouldn't pick the PI7 over the PI5 because they are simply not worth it. But there is yet another area where the improvement is more obvious and that is the sound quality. Both buds use the same 9.2mm drivers, but while this single driver covers the whole frequency range on its own in the PI5, the engineers threw in a separate balanced armature driver to deliver more crisp and more detailed high frequencies in the PI7. And the dual drivers have their own individual amplifiers too for better separation, more dynamic range and less distortion in the sound and I basically just described the difference in their sound already. Both bots have very good and powerful bass, but the lower registers feel more in balance with the rest of the frequency range on the PI7. The PI5 have more of a kick down there, so if that's what you are after, and you prefer the warmer sound signature of the PI5 in general, then you are better off with the cheaper bots. But if you are looking for a lean, tactile bass, a wonderfully balanced mid-range with exceptional vocal clarity, and if you like picking up on all the tiniest little details in the treble, then you have to pay up and get the PI7. 
For the extra $150, you get a neutral sound signature, a natural timber which just sounds right, with no colorations and distortion whatsoever. Imaging is spot on, separation is first class, however the sound stage could be more developed in all directions maybe, but I'm just splitting hairs here. Both the PI5 and the PI7 can sound loud enough, but neither of them go up to crazy volume levels. So basically both buds are a joy to listen to, but if you want the most accurate and detailed sound, then you will have to opt for the PI7. And if you listen to high res music, the gap between the two opens up even further. The PI7 can deliver a truly fantastic sound and one of the best, if not the best, true wireless musical experience that money can buy right now. But we are talking about the most expensive earbuds I have ever tested, so I sort of expected them to at least deliver an amazing sound. But are they the best earbuds I have ever tested? No, they are not. Are they my favorite earbuds I have ever tested? No, they are not. Are they exceptional earbuds? Yes, they are, in a way. Their design is sleek, build quality is first class, their sound is remarkably clear, balanced and entertaining, plus the case offers a truly unique feature, namely the audio retransmission. The wireless charging, the true 24-bit high-res audio, and the Aptex adaptive codec are just the icing on the cake. But I still cannot get over the fact that the case is fully plastic, the battery life is less than acceptable, the touch controls are limited as far as their functionality goes, and you get barely any custom options in the smartphone app too. The ANC is decent, but not outstanding, and all of that for 399 euros or dollars. Take away the extras such as the audio retransmission, the balanced armature driver and the 24-bit capable Aptex adaptive codec and you get the PI5 for 249 euros or dollars. So which ones to choose? That's a tough call to make as these features are basically what make the PI7 unique and outstanding. Which one would I recommend? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe if the PI7 was around $300 I would say yeah, go ahead because they are that good. But they are not $400 good. Or maybe they are if you need the special functions and these buds are the only ones that can offer those particular features. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I would probably pick the PI7 over the PI5 because the PI5 simply do not offer anything extra over their competitors, but the PI7 have at least some unique tech under their hood. And their sound is one of the best too, so I'm more than likely going to keep them and send the PI5 back. But still, the $400 price tag is a tough pill to swallow. And if I may add a personal note, I never felt connected to either of the Bowers and Wilkins buds. I know it sounds lame and it doesn't make much sense, but I like loving my gadgets and somehow this emotional bond just never happened. I don't know why, but it is what it is. And if I didn't need the PI7 for future comparisons, maybe I would more than likely send them back too, because in my personal life I don't need any of the extra features, and I own other earbuds with a lovely sound too, such as the Master and Dynamic MW08 or the KEF MU3. But as always, that's just me and my personal opinion. And this was my review of the Bowers and Wilkins PI7. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We can continue the discussion about these earbuds in the comment section below. Tell me which one would you choose and why, for example. Have a great day everyone, and thanks for watching. See you next time.